Shame on me. I couldn't help myself. I got one. I've always had quite an itch of having to want to try shiny new hardware that I end up getting really excited about in the first few weeks that I have it. And then, well, after a few weeks, I tossed them away and probably never used them again, like I did with the Meta Quest and the Cat VR and well, most VR devices anyways. I always really hope that by trying out these new devices, I will be able to open up some kind of new and exciting business opportunities like creating immersive VR games for clients. But for some reason, the VR industry, well, it never really went into second gear. Originally, the whole gaming industry became very excited when they got their hands on the first Oculus Rift Dev Kit 1 or 2 or well, whatever. We all knew that this was just the beginning of something truly epic, immersive gaming experiences in VR. Yes, the resolution was a bit low. Yes, the thing was very painful to put on your head. Yes, it also made you really sick within five minutes of wearing it. And yes, half of the time it didn't even work. But these issues would soon be fixed, right? That was over 11 years ago and many, many iterations of different VR headsets. And still I can count the pixels on my MetaQuest 3 screens and the resolution of the outside cameras is laughable at best. I would personally be very ashamed if I have to sell something like the MetaQuest 3 and tell people about its amazing mixed reality capabilities while they are not amazing at all. Even selling these things at the loss did not make everyone run to their local shops or order online to actually get one. Introducing the Apple Vision Pro. <gasps> Hate or love Apple all you want, they are very good at knowing how to position a new project in the market in such a way that it really pushes their competitors to have to try harder. And the concept is good. Right from the start, they double the amount of pixels for each eye compared to the Quest 3. High resolution front cameras to be able to properly look through the headset into the real world, eye tracking, hand tracking, and seriously good hardware specs. And for anyone who doesn't know a lot about Apple's new silicon chips, they are quite awesome. For the techies, I have a MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro chip, and its gaming performance is on par with an Intel i9 CPU and an Nvidia 1070 graphics card, uh, all while consuming like a tenth of the same power. It's really quite impressive. And now we have all this power in a standalone mixed reality headset. And so I was super excited when it was first introduced. Even after hearing about them pulling an America first and Dominic second. My excitement didn't become any less. If I'm really honest to myself, it was only a matter of time before I found a good enough excuse to get one ship to the Netherlands, into my home and on my head. And now that I've had it for a few days, my experience is a bit mixed and my excitement is also a bit dampened as well. All right, this thing is amazing for watching movies. Apple TV and Disney Plus both offer 3D movies in the library and it's like being at the cinema, but without the annoying people eating out of crunchy bags next to you. And the 3D actually works way better than in the cinemas. But yeah, the thing is still very heavy and none of the included head straps really impress me. It feels very alike to wearing a Quest 2 or 3 with the better Elite strap. It's not bad per se, but I, I had hoped they would have been able to do something better. I've had quite a lot of fun watching Snake Zuckerberg's reaction where he is detailing why the Quest 3 is the better product, period. In the Netherlands we have this TV commercial. We from Toilet Duck recommend Toilet Duck. No shit you think the Quest 3 is a better product, Snake. You're selling it! And don't fully believe Snake as well, because yeah, well, the Quest 
has a big library of games or well it's getting bigger every day but the vision pro has many if not all existing ios apps that work natively in the hardware i've had such a blast replaying woven my first entertainment game on the vision pro it worked perfectly almost as if it was designed for it which it wasn't now, personally having used both the Quest 2 and 3 and now the Vision Pro, I think the Vision Pro is better in almost every way. But you really shouldn't compare them because they are quite different kinds of products. And, well, is the Vision Pro worth the price tag though? Probably not. But I can think of a lot of other expensive things that really have no reason to exist. I almost forgot, there is one thing that the Vision Pro absolutely fails compared to most standalone headsets. And that's the bloody battery. And it's cable. And wherever you keep it, it's the wrong spot. Leave it on the table, walk away, get really immersed, you'll drag the battery right off the table. Or put it in your pocket. And then, when you take off the Vision Pro, leave it on the table and walk away. Oh crap, you forgot. Battery still in your pants, and now you're weeping because you have a brick. $3,500 brick. Now, from a developer perspective, I've been playing around with it, creating Unity Project with it. Because I'm a game developer, it's one of the reasons I wanted one in the first place. You need a Unity Pro license for it, and it's a bit annoying that Unity keeps finding ways to force you to buy a Unity Pro license. But Luckily, there are ways to circumvent this, for which I won't go into detail, as I really don't want them to fix it. If you want to know how I did it, contact me on Discord. Apple has chosen to partner with Unity for gaming applications for the Vision Pro, which is actually quite great for Unity users. They have created a library called Polyspatial to help you create apps or games for the platform. And it's, it's still very, very limited, but at least you won't have to do a lot of things yourself and it saves a lot of time. There are basically three types of apps you can create for the Vision Pro. Flat 2D TV-like applications, partially emerged 3D mixed reality applications that allow you to add 3D objects in your living room. And lastly, fully emerge 3D VR applications. And then there's the eye tracking. I mean, eye tracking in games is amazing, right? Making stuff explode by just looking at it. <laughs> Painting with your eyes, blink to kill enemies. <coughs> looking angry to scare of annoying critters. I don't know, the possibilities are almost endless. No, guess again! They locked every eye tracking possibility. There's absolutely no way to get any input from eye or face tracking. None. I'd like to jest and say, ah, it's just Apple being Apple and it'll be fine. But no, I think that by doing this, they killed the Apple Vision Pro before it even had a chance. The reasons for them doing this are probably good. They say they want to protect everyone's privacy and if this is true, I even applaud them for it. But it still makes the Apple Vision Pro pretty useless for epic VR games. The only eye interaction I'm allowed is an automated and quite ugly highlighting effect. Now, I've just spent two days doing a deep dive in finding creative ways to see if I can detect when an object is being highlighted. But the highlighting itself isn't done within Unity, or at least not in a normal render pass. It's fully black boxed. It's impossible to, to detect it. Privacy? Yes. Crippling the whole device? Meh, just add a permission pop-up to a allow an app to use eye tracking and, and we're all good. All right, enough ranting. I'm sure there are enough game developers who don't think this is a deal breaker. And for them, I'll create a simple tutorial video next week that explains all the steps and requirements to create a simple project for the Apple Vision Pro. Because more epic content for whatever VR headset out there, it's a win in my books. See you next time.